Okay. I know people have been beating this like a dead horse, but here's my two cents. Now, I was in the sweat, Mississippi Valley State from 89 to 93. I, I, I didn't need Dion to appreciate HBCUs because I went to one. Um, I didn't need Dion to appreciate the culture because I lived it 30 years ago. But what he did do for HBCU, something that I hadn't seen since the days of Steve McNair, is he put a spotlight on us once again. All right. And it's up to us to keep that energy flowing now that he's moved on. Now, a lot of things happen on Prime's watch. Uh, a number one recruit turned down and F, a power five school for an HBCU. It's never been done before. College game day came to Jackson. No one ever thought that would happen. And the city of Jackson reportedly made over $30 million, <clears throat> excuse me, last year from the home football games and will probably do more this year. Now, the goal for any man is to leave something better than how he found it. And as much as I would have liked to have seen him stay a couple of more years, I, I understand why he left. As much as I wish that the timing of things could be better, could have been better, I understand that this happens in college football all the time. So, you know, some coaches don't even speak to their players before leaving, but he has to live his life we don't live it, okay? So what did he leave JSU? He left marketing knowledge. He explained how some of these classic games aren't really making the school any money and how FBS schools could be paying more money to HBCUs to travel and play them. He gave HBCUs somewhat of a blueprint on how to do better. And although no one else may have his persona, to duplicate what he did is up to us who care about HBCUs to use what we learn and to build upon it going forward. Now, he took his son to Colorado, but he didn't take all the footballs in Jackson. You can still have a great football team, a great band, a great atmosphere, just like you did before he got there. Now, I just don't want the narrative to be that we as black people are rooting against other black people who make advances in their career or make changes in their lives that take us away from other black people. And I'm trying to choose my words carefully, but that's just not what I want the narrative to be. As a sports fan, I can't count how many stories I've heard or seen over the years about there not being enough black football coaches on the next level, be it college or pro. And now one gets hired, but we get upset that he left an HBCU to do it. So we, we kind of can't have it both ways. We hate Dion from becoming the first HBCU coach to be hired directly as a head coach to an FBS school. But I just recently saw the state celebrate the 60th anniversary of James Meredith being the first black student at Ole Miss. Why did no one ever ask him why he didn't go to Jackson State? You know, is he a sellout? I mean, some of, some of you local people who are watching this right now, moved your kids out of Jackson because of crime, um, the tainted water situation, or maybe your kids needed to go somewhere where they can get a better education in, in Ridgeland or Madison or Clinton or Flowood. Do you feel like you're a sellout? I mean, do you, you hear how crazy that kind of sounds? So let's just say this. Let's say that Prime goes to Colorado and he succeeds. How many other black coaches will he bring up in the process? OK, what kind of financial donations could he make to the to Jackson State or the SWAC after he's been there long enough to get paid out even more money? He can still help black progress, even if it's from somewhere else. Now, I understand that he threw some shade on the city of Jackson. It was totally unnecessary. I understand that the kids got screwed out of a celebration. You know, you go undefeated, run a Boston on the SWAC and no one's really talking about it. That's probably the biggest, biggest tragedy in all of this. Now, Prime should have publicly shown remorse for how that was handled, and he didn't. You know, he's been Prime for 30 years. It would have been nice if he would have been Dion for a change. And I get that a lot of people don't like how it all went down. Jay JSU was his stepping stone. He knew how to sell himself. I mean, that's what makes him Prime. That's what he does. He left that um, when he was playing football in the NFL. He left Atlanta for San Francisco, left San Francisco for Dallas, left Dallas for Washington. I mean, so if a more prominent school comes to him or if the NFL comes calling, then he's going to leave Colorado. I mean, that's just what Prime does. 
but we need to put a, a Band-Aid on the bruised ego and just be happy for the last two years. You know, JSU was front and center. HBCUs had a spotlight. The SWAC was prominent. Don't let a future coach see all of this turmoil and, and venom. You know, don't let future students see all of this online hate because the last thing you want to do is have your hatred for someone make someone else think that your school is unattractive you know maybe they don't maybe they wanted the hbcu experience until they see all the mess that's going on as for prime i mean i wish you good luck bro i mean however i i will say this you you kind of answered the question if you were swack or not okay because someone who is swack would understand that as a head coach, you can't do that to an HBCU like you do, like the head coaches do the PWIs. You, you just can't. Because if HBCUs and PWIs were all the same, you coming here wouldn't have been a big deal in the first place. You owe JSU just as much as they owe you. You needed a job. They allowed you to come in and kind of run things the way you saw fit when most institutions would have told you it was their way or the highway. They embraced you and your family, and they treated you all like the SWAT royal family. They defended you against Eddie Robinson Jr. <laughs> when he said that you weren't SWAT. Now, dude is probably somewhere in tears laughing right now. Yeah, I know, Eddie. You told us so. But I realize that you've probably never felt a need to apologize for anything in your life because you're a prom. But this may be a good place to start. You left a lot of people of all ages feeling betrayed. And if things don't work out in Colorado, it would have been nice to kind of have a bridge to walk back across. But you burned that thing down with the jet fuel from your private jet that you took to Colorado. You don't want to be looking crazy if that prime membership isn't renewed up there, okay? Sometimes I understand we all have to leave home in order to better our situation, but it's never wise to forget where home is. So do everyone a solid, send a nice open letter to the JSU faithfuls, and you know, you won't win all of them back, but the gesture would definitely appreciate it. 